Hey guys, and welcome to today's episode of Scandi Tutorials. Today, we're going to learn some really cool raindrop effects in Photoshop, how to add a reflection onto the edges, and also how to make it look like it's really on the image and it really stands out. Okay, so let's get straight into the tutorial. Now, the first thing to do is drag and drop the image that you're going to use into Adobe Photoshop. I'm going to use this image of wood and I'm going to add some water droplets onto the side. Now double click on the background and make a new layer and leave it named as layer zero, it's fine. And then create a new layer on top of that and rename it to water drops. Press enter, then you're good to go. Go to your elliptical marquee tool. You will need to right click because it will be set as your rectangular marquee tool so just right click in the top left and choose the elliptical marquee tool and then create a circle roughly about the size that you want the water droplet to be. So I'd say yep, yeah, I was pretty much happy with that. Then go over to your gradient tool. You will need to right click on the paint bucket tool because it will show like that. So right click, click on the gradient tool and then make sure that it's set to linear gradient and then double click on the bar to the left and this is your gradient editor editor if I can say it right then on your presets choose the third one across which is from black to grey to white so just click that once left click and then press OK then zoom in using your well using the gradient tool zoom in by holding alt and scrolling on your mouse and then hold left click and hold from the top left to the bottom right and that will make the gradient start with black and end in white now if you want to get rid of it or you want to do it the opposite way control alt and z and then click and hold from the bottom right up to the top left and I'm going to have mine like this for the sake of this tutorial. So, Control and D to deselect, and then set your blending mode to overlay. Oops. Click away, and then scroll out. So you can see that we've sort of got a you know a water droplet kind of taking shape. Obviously you want to try and bear in mind the, the direction of the light. So obviously from the from the top left of this image here you can see that there's kind of light coming in from this direction. So setting the gradient, you know you've already got kind of a good reflection built in. You might need to put a reflection on it yourself or we'll show you how to do that anyway but obviously for, for this image I'm I'm pretty happy with that and, and the way that it looks anyway. So the next thing that I'm going to do is double click on this layer to open up the layer style options and the first thing that you want to select is inner shadow so click that so it brings up the inner shadow options and set the blend mode to linear burn then you want to change the opacity to 40 percent uncheck use global light and set the angle to minus 30 degrees. Change the distance to 2 pixels. Leave the choke at 0. And change the size to 5 pixels. Leave the quality as it is. So you can see that it's started to you know, add a little bit of a, a background. And it's kind of blending in a little bit more with the wood now. But... We're going to try and make this blend in a little bit more. Um, if you want, you can change the, the distance and the size. Do increase it or decrease it, depending on the size of the water droplet that you're using. Uh, we're going to put a, another kind of shadow on it anyway, so do this first and then kind of come back. But well, I just use these presets for now anyway, just to, to keep you going. So select Drop Shadow and set the Blend Mode to Linear Burn. Change the opacity to 30%. Uncheck use global light and change the angle 
to 127 degrees. Change the distance to 10 pixels and change the size to 14 pixels. So then you've got something that looks like that. Now I can see that my shadow on the wood is, is quite dark. Now obviously with a raindrop being transparent it wouldn't cast such a dark shadow. So if you do have something you know similar to that after you've put the inner shadow and the drop shadow on, I'll show you a little way just to kind of lighten up the shadow a little bit to make it look look more real. So on your blend mode there's a blend mode colour so obviously it's set to black as default so on my drop shadow I'm just going to open up this menu and then grab the eyedropper and grab one of the colours that's kind of like a neutral colour so I'd say like um, a darker grey there and it just kind of changes the shadow a little bit and then press OK and then change the inner shadow it's probably something a little bit darker so maybe something from up here I would, no actually I'll, it looks better lighter actually so I'll just keep it as that and then it kind of makes it look like it you know it's actually on the wood so once you're happy with that just press OK now if you do want to add um, like another highlight or another reflection on the top I'll show you how but I'm going to keep mine as it is but if you do just make a new layer and rename it to highlight and just press enter when you're done and then press B to go over to your brush tool and scroll in by pressing alt and scrolling on the keyboard and select a really soft edged brush so something like I've got on there and make sure that you've got the foreground color set to white if it is set to black then just press X on the keyboard just to invert the colors like that but I'm just gonna have mine as white um, I changed the hardness as well put the hardness to about 90% and mess around with the flow and the opacity as well so just for this I've got my flow at 20% and my opacity at 100 and then just scroll in and you can just kind of paint in like extra parts of light so it, it really does add um, a, a strong reflection on the front like that so I'm gonna keep them as they are now you want to group these together if you're gonna make more water drops so hold control left click highlight make sure that water drops is selected as well but not layer zero and then let go of control and press control and G to create a group so now you've got the water droplets they're still separated by the layers but they're all grouped together and make a duplicate of that by pressing ctrl and j so now you've got a group one copy on top and then press ctrl and t to transform or move the object and then you can move that across but keeping all the layers together as well now we're going to mess around now with angles to try and make it look like it's it's with the angle of the wood and there's a couple of commands that you can do in transform which makes that a little bit easier for you as well so I'm just gonna hold control alt and then grab the corner and you can see that it it kind of warps it from one way to another so to, to look like it's on here I want to warp it this way a little bit like that or you can hold control and shift to go that way and shift and alt to resize but to keep it in scale obviously you can just left click to resize but it's it doesn't keep it in proportion so to keep everything in in proportion just hold control and shift uh, not control and shift sorry shift and alt and then you can resize however you want so I've just changed the angle of that one around a little bit I'll go into my first group so I'll click the check go into my first group press control and T and then just do the same again with this one just kind of have a mess around with it until it looks like you know it's it's really on the wall and just change them around 
just so they don't look you know exactly like each other and then press the check once you're happy so we're pretty much getting there now but with something kind of this big you'd think that you know it would have come down the wall a little bit or it wouldn't be in such a, a stationary position so if you want to kind of bring in like a mark behind it I'm just going to bring that down a bit then open up your group go onto the water drops layer go to filter and then go to liquify and then just scroll in, uh, zoom in the way that you normally would and just move it out of the way so you can see what you're editing and then make the brush size about the size of the drop so use the brackets under the plus and return key and then kind of drag it out in the general direction that you want the droplet to go so I'm just going to left click and hold and then just drag that out a little bit like that and then press OK and you can kind of see you know it makes it come down a little bit there are other ways that you can do it you can do smaller ones so just click water drop again filter liquify zoom in and then just move it a little bit and it kind of makes it look like it's you know it's dropping down obviously just play around with it play around with little bits of shine and just keep duplicating them and and messing around with it obviously using them presets you're always going to going to get a really good water droplet anyway but i hope it's made it a bit easier anyway for you guys it didn't take me long to pick up and i did a couple in just under an hour but please like share and as always subscribe to my channel